moved to and from being an African in, an African in America. He grew up in South Central. We talked about that. We know everything that comes with that. Dr. Harrell taught me years ago about a study where they looked at like baseline blood pressure. And like when stress, you know, your blood pressure goes up and it only falls back down so much, especially when it's chronic stress. And then if, I think this is a rat study, huh? And, and, and when the rat gave birth to her offspring, their baseline was even elevated, right? And so they were born with elevated stress levels. So their norm is actually toxic. Right? Again, that's the context and the environment within which we are breeding, if you will. And I use the term breeding on purpose because of what? Transgenerational trauma. The state of Maryland was well known for breeding us and them. They stopped bringing folks in and they started forcing folks to have sex, meaning that they was forcing people to rape and then produce offsprings. And in other, in other words, the African woman's womb was a slave-making factory. Just like you got four plants that assembly lines, that's what the black woman's womb was. And so when you start talking about the transgenerational trauma, you start talking about elevated levels that are actually considered to be norms now. And we still be the descendants of that stuff. Y'all following me? And so that's all a part of what happens. And then that affects your cognition, right? That affects how you deal with stress in your environment. Somebody step on your foot. If, you, if your baseline stress is actually low and healthy, you can take that. But if you're already ready to blow, it only take that, it only take you to think that that person, you see mom on their <laughs> shoes, you got on your brand new white shoes in the crowded club, man dude look like he gonna come over here and step on my shoes. Yeah. Can't have that. <laughs> Super sensitive, right? We call it hypervigilance. It's one of the characteristic traits of post-traumatic stress disorder. You become hypervigilant. It don't take too much to set you off anymore. That's the context, South Central. He admits that he was forced, I said that. He was like, El Hodge, I said that. He was the real life personification of Njadaka. Who is Njadaka? Who? Who's Njadaka? Don't Google it. I know y'all got those pocket computers. Somebody's like, yeah, so, you know, they're going to come out with the contact lens as soon as Doc. They're going to be like, let me swipe with their eyeball and stuff, blinking like, they're looking crazy like. <laughs> Who is Njadaka? Who is Killmonger? <laughs> Who? Uh, the, the, antagonist the antagonist of Black Panther, right? He was the real life personification, Michael B. Jordan's character, right? For those who are still wondering. Like, oh, Michael B. Jordan, need a melt. You see him? <laughs> 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 right. So his African name is Njadaka, right? And so the story behind Killmonger is that what? He had an African father, an American African mother. He grew up in South Central, right? Or somewhere in LA. Right? He was in them streets. He went in and got military training and came back and was ready to set off the revolution. Y'all feel that? Anybody feel that too? Yeah. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. I'll just be checking in because I feel it too. See, that's the other thing about us, y'all. We be psychic like that. Y'all, you thought you was the only one that just got that chill, but just ask every now and then, like, anybody else feel that? Anybody? Girl, yeah, right? <laughs> Check in from time to time. Validate yourself. Mm -hmm. It's okay. So, anyway, Killmonger and Nipsey Hussle was like, Nipsey Hussle said it himself. He said, when he heard that line that I would, you know, you know, kill me, I would rather be buried than to be a prisoner. Y'all remember that line? Yeah. Nipsey, I gotta watch Black Panther, yeah, ain't enough of y'all not. But he said that line resonated with him because he felt that deeply. He would rather be dead than incarcerated. He said, bury me in the ocean with my ancestors who knew to jump ship rather than to be taken captive. Sidebar, y'all watch American Gods? Mm -hmm. Y'all gotta watch that. It's one scene where um, a Nazi the spider, right? So real quick, American Gods is a show about all, how all of the different gods from all the different cultures around the world came to America. And they are literally personified beings walking around with human people manipulating folks, right? And so Anansi, which is a West African deity, he came over on the slave ship with the enslaved Africans. So he's walking down as a spider, and it turns, it's Orlando Jones, you know, dude from Drumline? Mm -hmm. Drumline Hill? <laughs> <laughs> so, he came over as a spider and then they was praying to a Nazi, a Nazi help us, we don't know what's happening, these wicked folks have captured us. So he turned into the human form, got his like purple and green plaid suit, and he was just kicking it to these folks. And basically what he was telling them is that you might as well burn this ship down right now because generation after generation after generation of y'all are about to be captive. Mm -hmm. So he said, y'all need to break these chains, he unlocked their chains, he said, y'all need to go up there and slit the throat of all of these Dutch, he was going off. He said, burn the ship down. 
that transgenerational piece, right? So anyway, I don't know how I got to Anansi. I guess I just wanted to tell you all the story. But he was telling them the same thing, that burn the ship down. You'd rather die than be captive. And he said the one thing that you can benefit from, knowing that you can rest assured about, is that the tobacco that your children's children are going to be forced to pick for these folks is going to give a whole lot of them cancer. I like that part, too. He would soak up the knowledge and make it practical. His fiance, uh, Lauren London, right? She suggested that he read a book called The Way of the Superior Man. I know some so-called conscious folks who can't touch this book, right? But he read it and he started sharing it and telling other people to jump into it. That's a very profound thing because the book tells you how to be an, excuse me, an upright man, especially when power is being thrown at you when you have recognition and fame. So the way of the superior man is a way of self-refinement, which is the process that he was on, and also the process to help to change Malcolm Little, Detroit Red, into El Haj Malik El Shabazz. So the ADOS versus Pan-Africanism, who knows what that is? ADOS, ADOS is American Descendants of Slaves. It's a movement, well, people always challenge it, the fact that it's a movement. It's an organization that's growing right now and gaining momentum saying basically what we need to be focused on are just people who are here in America that are descendants of slaves, never mind all this pan-African stuff, right? And so it's this big old debate going on. In fact, uh, Dr. Wimbush and Dr. Jerry Ball, two of my colleagues at Morgan, just debated that some folks have made a presentation on it Sunday at a church up in Baltimore. But I put that here because Nipsey Hussle is showing us why it needs to be more than just American descendants of slaves. It needs to be a pan-African perspective, meaning that Africans all around the world united is the best way to go, right? So we can take the best of all of our world and not just where we are right here. If you look at the history of Africans in America, for the most part, at least the part that they give us, is in direct reaction or response to the presence of Europeans. And we need to understand our life and our legacy in the absence of them not just reacting to them, not with them at the center of our uh, basic survival, but with them not even being in the picture, because we go thousands of years before any of them ever showed up, and we need to understand that and embrace that. So anyway, last point, he made a quote. He said, I think it's God that keeps you protected from the situations while you're learning what you're really here for, mm. right? And it's really deep, because he talked about basically you dodge bullets, you know, not get killed here, not get arrested there or whatever. He says, basically, while you still are clueless about what your purpose is, he said, God is what's there protecting you in that moment. He, it was a moment of vulnerability for him because he kind of almost apologized to the interview. Like, I mean, you know, I might sound crazy, but, uh, but he spit it anyway. So that's the notion of being an African in the